Today I have a tutorial that will be going over mistakes that I often see beginners making when starting out doing fake wounds. I have some tips that will help increase how real your gory makeup can look. It's not an extensive be all and end all list, it's just some stuff that is hopefully helpful to most people. If you don't like my particular style or you don't want your stuff to be based in realism, then by all means keep doing your own thing. Occasionally there are some makeups that are posted that do still trick me into thinking that they're real, so I've tried to analyze and separate out what the usual tell tell signs are that something is fake. So for the sake of this video, I'm going to be demonstrating it with an out of kit wax, but these tips can be applied to most materials. So let's start with the basic build up and structure of a wound and the things that I see people doing which I think can be improved upon. So number one is in the design of the wound. I know a lot of people just grab some wax or grab whatever and they just think that they're going to do something gory and they start playing without ever really considering what caused the injury or how old the injury is. If you do stop to consider these things, it will definitely impact your design and your color palette choices. So fresh blood and pinks would be for a newer injury versus scabs, old dried blood and darker bruising colors for older injuries. And this will often make your wound look more realistic if you consider all of these elements. I pretty much always use a real life reference image of injuries when I'm recreating them as it's got every detail there for you to replicate which then equals a more realistic makeup. I did used to hate looking at real references, like I was the kind of person that would get faintish if I saw real blood, but through small doses of research I now have no problem looking at any reference photo. I have successfully desensitized myself and I think it has made me a better artist in the process. So to illustrate this, I'll show you an attempted, unconsidered sculpt here using my wax. So this will also illustrate point number two. I often see people that have too high of a sculpt. For this injury, I've not made an edge at the top. It's a totally random shape. I've made the edges really high so that it looks like it's all just being piled up on top of the skin rather than being part of the skin that has been torn away. Point number three that I also see quite a bit is unblended and visible edges. So I've also made kind of bad unblended edges here just to demonstrate that even if I have a perfect color match of the skin and a nice blood application, if you can see where the wax begins and ends, it will be a dead giveaway that this is a fake injury. And if you can see where the wax is built up and it doesn't look like it's actually part of the arm or the body anymore, that will also make it look fake. Now for the color side of things, number four, what I see people struggling with is color matching skin. So I could have a really great considered wound that I've copied from a reference image. It's not too high. I've taken the time to blend out the edges nicely. But then if I'm not very good at color matching skin, this will leave an obvious area where the fake wound is a different color to the skin around it. And this is probably the hardest thing to master. And it really is just practicing and practicing until you train your eyes to see and pick out colors. I started out really bad at it. It took me probably about a year of practice to start seeing colors, but now I think I'm really good at seeing colors. You just have to practice and you will get better. Some things I can say to help though, is to recommend that you don't use really thick, heavy, opaque colors if you can help it. If you build things up in subtle, transparent washes, it will give you a lot more realism as skin isn't this purely opaque, monotonous thing. It's kind of transparent, which is why you can see veins and things through it. And it's why cake face foundation can look really weird if there's nothing else on your face. So I would make it a personal challenge to you to be as subtle as you can with your coloring and use the least amount of color possible. This also transitions nicely into my number five, which is I've seen people drawing red around a wound and leaving it unblended and then move on to applying blood, which kind of dumbfounds me because I've never seen a wound that has just a red stripe around it. In fact, a lot of the more traumatic injuries I've seen, if they're fresh, the skin doesn't actually have any erythema. It doesn't have any bruising. It's just skin. If there's redness around it, try to include it as subtly as possible. I usually dilute the color with lots of isopropyl or alcohol. I'll do a translucent wash and then I'll go back over it with a clean brush to take away even more color and to blend it out. It's better to have not enough color than to have too much color. And don't add older bruise tones to fresh injuries. Also, the purple in bruises isn't really a purple. It's kind of a mix of a lot of other colors with just hints of purple. And I've seen people grab a glittery purple eyeshadow and put that on as a bruise, as if their brains go, bruises are purple, and they have this idea in their head. Instead of 
actually looking at a real bruise and seeing what is really there rather than what we imagine will be there. Reference images are very important. Number six is I've seen people put pure black pigment in the middle of wounds and it might seem like it's a good idea to add contrast, but in reality, it makes it look faker. If you were to look at an injury, it doesn't have any pure black in there. There might be darker reds, darker purples or contrast, but it's not gonna be pure black. So don't add black to wounds to darkness as this won't look good or natural. And to further make the contrast pop out around your darker red, or purples, you could put lighter pinks or the fatty yellow colors. Use the natural wound colors to your advantage and that will create an interesting contrast. Similarly, it can also look quite weird and out of place to have no texture inside your wound and just see the fake blood sitting on top of your skin texture. So I would recommend adding some texture inside the wound, even if it's subtle texture, just anything really will help that to look more realistic. Extra points if you're copying the texture from a reference image. Number seven is moving into blood. I've seen a lot of people have problems with their blood beating up on their material. Cheaper fake blood will beat up badly on a material, especially with things like silicon and wax and real blood doesn't beat up. The best trick is to decant a little bit of blood and stir in a couple of drops of dish soap. This will really help the blood to sit more naturally and not beat as badly, but this obviously also means that the blood is no longer mouth safe. I mean, that is if the blood is already mouth safe, like more life stuff. And for the coloring issue, to get a blood that doesn't look super pink, you will pretty much just have to shell out for the good stuff. My favorites are Fleet Street Dark, Mold Lice Vanial Blood, and Rob Smith's Silicon Flow Blood. Number eight, another pet peeve of mine to do with blood, and this is where it has to do less with realism, as there are some wounds that bleed a lot, and then there's some wounds that bleed very little, but the best reference images that I've found and the most realistic makeups are the ones that don't cover and hide everything in blood. Dousing blood over everything, especially the thick, opaqueish, fake blood, can hide everything that you've worked so hard to achieve. You could have the most beautiful edges, a perfect color match skin, amazing detail on the inside of the wound, and it's all just obliterated in a second. And then when I look at it, if it's covered in blood, I will automatically assume it's been covered because the person was trying to hide stuff like bad edges or a bad paint job. So aim to make the edges, the shape, the coloring really good so you don't have to rely on blood to cover mistakes and then just use a small amount of blood, even the smallest amount that you can get away with, just to see how that sits. A good trick to make it look bloody but not covered is to initially do a really messy heavy layer, let the blood sit and dry slightly and then start to wipe it away with tissues or water dampened cotton tips and this will leave traces of blood and the illusion of dry wiped away blood that you get in reference images where the wounds have been cleaned. It will hint at the blood being there without needing a lot of it. I'll usually use two different kinds of bloods, more of a drying blood and more of a fresher flowing blood to make it look real as well. Number nine, another mistake I see beginners, well not even just beginners, everybody making really, is pulling off prosthetics without a remover. So this is less dramatic with wax, but with things like latex or encapsulated silicate appliances or anything that is glued down to the skin, by pulling it off without any removers, you're damaging your skin because you will eventually obliterate your protective skin barrier and then things like isopropyl alcohol will start to sting a lot. So be gentle with your skin. A good removal takes time, a proper FX remover, many cotton tips and a sense of empathy. No sadism here, please. And this also runs nicely into number 10, is beginners being unsafe. So the internet, while it is wonderful for giving us a lot of information, it harbors a lot of very unhelpful and downright dangerous techniques and lessons for the budding FX enthusiasts to stumble upon. So don't trust people. Don't even trust me. Get a second opinion on things and don't rely just on forums and YouTube for your information because I have seen a lot of downright dumb shit and a lot of it is from people who have hundreds of thousands of subscribers, high quality looking videos, millions of views and it's bad information. So be especially careful about using stuff that isn't designed or intended to be used on the skin and isn't a tested cosmetic product. So things like everyday household items or art items can actually be quite dangerous if used in the wrong way. I've seen people assume that non-toxic means skin safe, but it definitely does not. Don't wear contact lenses without consulting an optometrist first. Don't put anything in your mouth that's not an approved dental product. I've seen people using spray can paint from a hardware store on teeth. That's insane.
insane. And lastly, number 11, I see a lot of beginners not being very creative or very original and not crediting original designs that they've recreated. And again, this isn't just beginners. I've seen huge YouTubers doing it all the time, but as a beginner, it is tempting to just recreate and recreate and recreate. But instead of watching a tutorial, say a video where I apply a wax degloved finger, Use the knowledge that you get about how to handle wax and how to blend it out and how to design an injury, how to apply color and blood realistically, and then take that knowledge from the tutorial and apply it to something else that you've come up with. And that will push you a lot further rather than always copying other people's exact designs. So yeah, I think that's everything. Thank you so much for watching. Hopefully this was helpful information. It's what I find myself telling people quite a lot in personal email exchanges where I critique work. So may as well put it all out into a video for everybody. I'll be back soon with my next video. If you're not already subscribed, you can subscribe here and it will tell you when a new video is uploaded. And yeah, let me know your thoughts on this in the comments below. I'll talk to you guys soon.